Grab your dog, grab your strap, grab your ex. <laughs> grab both, we don't judge, and we're just here shooting the shit, so don't come for us. Be nice. Welcome back to your girl's favorite podcast. We're so happy to be back. We took a little break, and we have so much exciting news for you. Yeah! Our group chat is officially live again. We've got Hannah here with us as you our guys. new fourth. And uh, Hi, thanks for tuning in. We're going to start off every episode with a fun little tradition. We're going to do this or that. We're going to have a hot seat. Now, in honor of Hannah being new here, we're going to put you in the hot seat. <laughs> but in the future, we're going to put our guests in the hot seat. So are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's mean, do it. Okay. Kenzie, you want to just get the ball Hannah. rolling? Yeah. All right. Hot seat. So I have a few questions for you. Let's do it. Quick answers. You All right, ready? real quick. Let's go. Therapy or day drinking? Therapy. Coffee or matcha? Coffee. Thrifting or name brands? Thrifting, always. Strap or vibrator? Strap. <laughs> Wine or beer? Wine. Eyes or smile? Smile. Out to eat or cook? <laughs> I don't like it, no. <laughs> um, out to eat or cook? Cook during the week and then treat treat each other every now and then on the weekend. But I want to treat them and then also be treated. You're a girl too. I'm a girl too. <laughs> game night or clubbing? Nowadays, probably game night. Unless it's bread. Which I'm so excited for. Anyway, um, a bar full of exes or a bar full of straight girls? If it's my nice exes, maybe, but I think I'm going to pick the straight girls. My exes what are so scary. Exes, yeah, my favorite exes, if they, if they were nice, most times, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Date your ex or play on the railroad tracks? I'm building a home on the tracks. <laughs> you know? <Same. laughs> yeah. I'm dead. Great job, Hannah. Way to go. Thanks, guys. I liked yeah. it. That was very That's sweet. That's our this or that. More where that came from. All right. So we're all pretty uh, fruity here. And obviously, when you're a woman loving woman, we are known for getting really deep really quick. So we're just going to dive on into some really adored questions that we want to revisit. Um, let's talk about heteronormative boxes put on the queer community we're going to talk about terms openness in the community and how childhood affects the way we act in our relationships blake you want to start since yours is so fun so a little background about me i'm armenian uh so if you guys don't know what that is for everybody that's new um it's very cultured very christian religion um it's shoved down my throat at a very young age uh, i've been gay since about what since I can remember since age seven so uh being gay is already like out of the question like you're not you can't be that um growing up seeing you know a man like not treating their woman like a queen made me kind of think okay great so like if that's how men are kind of treating women then I can go a different route and make them be treated way better and put them on a pedestal where I kind of I guess messed up was I thought really straight in that sense where I'm mass presenting um so then I need to start being like the man I'll, I'll do everything work uh fucking open the doors for you buy you the flowers do all this shit that like boyfriends do in a sense um but then along through my journey in the gay world um I started realizing that no I'm a girl too so yeah. it's like very 50 50 I like doors open too yeah. I like flowers being bought for me do you feel like because of the way you were ra like the men you were raised around you you had to imitate a man yes. like a class or a classic <clears throat> version of like what that, that is or an American yeah. version or wh whatever you know yeah yeah because yeah. that that's what you kind of see right yeah. you see that on TV you see that with your parents like they're very straight you're like oh okay so if I'm gay and I like way more femme girls growing up like I mean come on like I had Selena Gomez on my fucking wall you know I, I knew I was gay like everyone knew but they just didn't want to like accept that in a way did you feel like men so you were saying they taught you what not to do yeah they taught me what your not circumstance to do. like yeah. you looked at yeah, the yeah. way men treated women and because you knew you liked women you were like this is the opposite of how I want yeah, to be big time. so in a way you still learned something from that I did um, I learned but a lot. I think culturally there's a lot of trauma there probably and and that influences, you know, even the way you're 
having to show up as a queer person and the, and the hard work you've put in to present yourself in a certain way, like that's not always accepted in those cultures, right? No, it's not accepted in the cultures. I mean, I chop my hair off and it's like, I'm even more gay than anything now. And you're I, not ever allowed to certain things. Yeah, now, and I'm right? not allowed to certain things. In terms of like, okay, so I lived a double life, right? So mm-hmm. I was a Hannah Montana as I call it. So like when I was with family, um, I would be super femme. I had long hair, so it was easier to hide that. Um, I was super femme, dresses, all that stuff, lie about boyfriends, about who I kissed, never slept with a man still to this day. Um, But when I was outside and like in school and like felt safer around my peers, um, I was way more myself. I was was really gay. But it was kind of hard because like growing up, I wasn't really allowed to, like, have sleepovers or anything like that. And it wasn't the kids that were the problem, kind of. It was more so the the parents in that aspect. Like, you know, don't bring Blake the gay around because, like... So the parents knew you were gay, even though you were presenting as feminine? Yeah, because energy doesn't lie at the end of the day, right? Yeah, they just caught on. Yeah, you just kind of... Like, I was very outspoken, too. Like, I would talk on certain things. Like, no, like, I think gay people are great. Like, I don't think you should, like, slam on them not saying I'm gay, you know? But, like, table talk, you know, like, family nights and stuff i'll be like protecting the gays so much and be like why are you protecting them so much I'm like because everyone's equal like you shouldn't really judge that so you've yeah. recently cut your hair yes. too yes. how has that affected or has it affected your relationship with your family um i haven't seen my mom since i cut my hair uh i do talk to my mom um recently started a better relationship what's the reason behind you cutting your hair that she doesn't want to see you uh okay so I think how my maybe majority of the people that are religious and stuff like that, uh, once you cut your hair, it's kind of like they think in their brain that you're transitioning. Um, I'm not transitioning. I just I'm honing in more of my masculine side. And I I, I like the way I present myself this way. I feel more comfortable. I I feel more confident. I feel like it's more me. Um, But my mom's biggest fear um, as maybe it is for some people. I wonder, so in a culture like that, there's less of a, because they know you're gay now. Yeah. There's less of a concern that you're gay and it's more how you present, yes. which is really interesting. Like, yeah. what is the issue? And also, what's masculine about short hair? I know a lot of men with long hair and I know a lot of women with short hair that, yeah. you know, so where does, I mean, it's so interesting, you know, culturally how sometimes they have these opinions about certain mm-hmm. things. Like, what if you decided you liked boys tomorrow and yeah. you still had short hair? Literally. Like, what does that have to do with your sexuality? I think you know? a lot, I mean, a lot plays into it, right? It also then goes back to, which is very much our culture and, and the age in which we are nowadays. But if we were to be parents, it's the thought, you love your kid regardless. Right. You just said if you were to transition that they were worried about that or they wouldn't well why you cut your hair you dress different you have long hair you do transition it's this mold that we have where you have to look this way or you have to look that way well why why is that the case and it starts with you guys parents it starts with you you're you're making us believe that we can't look like this or we have to be this right why i remember you saying a while back too you were like yeah, my mom has finally accepted that I'm with Kinsey. Yeah. Um, you two are dating. Yeah. Um, she still but calls she, her my roommate. Yeah. But she, yes, doesn't still completely. Act- yes. Yeah. Literally. Um, so my mom's thing is like, I love my mom. My mom is a, a great fucking human being. Um, I, I just think that they're not really educated right. a lot, you know, and, and it, as her firstborn daughter who is gay, you know, like it's my job to like communicate with her. And like, I also have to understand boundaries too, right? I'm not going to talk about my sex life with her because it's too much for her to understand. But the way she thinks is like, look, I love you. I just don't love your lifestyle. But this isn't like a lifestyle. You know what I mean? It's it's just, it, it, it's kind of like my hair is dark brown. Like I, I can't still really can't wrap that. my head around. Okay, so she's like, okay, I'm okay with you being right. with Kinsey or whatever. I'm still not going to call her your girlfriend, right. but she's a roommate, but I'm okay with it. It's now it's an issue of aesthetic. Yes. Like, oh, but you don't look like a lady. There's always also, something. Mom, what does a lady look like? Right. You right. know, that's an issue. Right. So. And that's a big issue too, because like, what does a lady look like? You know, yeah. and she'll give examples of her, and I'll be like, no, that's what an independent and strong woman is like so why am I at fault for kind of being in my truth you know yeah and also to the point of the way in which you like does your I guess my question yeah does your mom take the time to educate herself on how you look on you being queer on all of the things because that's another point of it right right yeah you don't have to accept me but are you taking the time to educate or try to understand no she she 
beats around the bush all the time. She won't really talk about that subject. I will bring it up. I'll be like, hey, mom, like, I just, I really, like, want you to be okay with me talking about women. Like, I want to be able to, like, you know, call my mom up and just ask for, like, some motherly advice and be like, hey, like, I'm going through a really tough time, like, with my partner or something. Like, is there any, like, adult advice you can give me? I never had that. I had to kind of, like you know, raise myself. Parent yourself. It was really fucking hard. You I think a I lot mean? of gay people go through that too. If you're not as accepted, yeah. you parent yourself. You have to yeah. teach yourself everything for the first time. Yeah, especially again. when religion is like shoved down your throat. It's hard to get out of that too. Yeah, And especially when you're not being received with love. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Then of course yeah. you're, you're almost, yeah. even if you're not thrown out, if you're not accepted, a part of you is thrown out. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't get invited to family gatherings anymore. I don't. I haven't seen my nephews, my nieces. Well, it's even that thing. Even if you are allowed, right? right? If there's this energy of like, yeah, we accept your love or your life, your love life. Just keep right. it out of our house. But also, we don't. We don't like the way you look. Like, who cares yeah. how someone shows up in the world? Yeah, I wish yeah, they exactly. said that. Instead, what they do is when I sit at a dinner table, they get up and walk away or make comments and like, oh, Blake, when are you going to get a boyfriend? Like, why are those comments yeah. made? And I think, you know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with like enjoying right. someone looking feminine, but yeah. it's also like, what's the motive there? What's the motive behind it? What's the right. deeper issue? Because a lot of times how those kind of parents are they're wanting you to be feminine so you can earn the respect of men correct and that's not a reason to present as feminine right. you if you present as feminine that's beautiful right. we love our femmes right. here but like <laughs> present as femme because that's your truth right yeah. don't present as femme to get validation from some gender that's well, absolutely. weird it's like or ancient they, well they're like like some of my like my sister or whatever or whoever like my brother they're like hey why'd you cut your hair or whatever like they don't care that I did it. They just ask why. Yeah. And it's like, and and I'm like, well, why do you like? Why does it matter? You know, yeah. just asking. Like very innocent. And they're like, well, you're so pretty with long hair. I was like, yeah. well, I'm still pretty. I think. Yeah, so, I feel no. prettier now. I feel prettier. Yeah. I feel handsome. I feel all of it at the same. Well, and time. a lot of people don't understand gender euphoria yet. Yeah. Uh, it's very. It's totally. an evolving it takes thing. Time. It takes but it's time. it takes time. And and but then you know I think like for me like when I first started presenting more in my truth. It's obviously it's a shock factor at first. Everyone's like anti it. But eventually they start to be like, wow, that actually makes sense. And yeah. the kind of it just you have to just do it, live in it, liberate yourself. And then eventually people are like, yeah, that is kind of her. Just they just accept yeah. it. It just takes time yeah. sometimes. But um, it's very interesting how that's something that you fought all through your 20s because Still all fighting. of your life you were yeah. told be a lady. Yeah. What is it? This is what a lady looks like. And eventually you're like, hold on just a second. Let me question things. Yeah. Let me do things how I want to do them. Yeah, question it's, everything. But it does take courage. And also, like, you're never going to be done fighting that. Like, you're always going to fight that. I, get, I, I think you, unfortunately, are continuing, continuously having to fight it. You shouldn't, right? Shouldn't, that yeah. shouldn't sure. be the yeah. case. And I also think what Alyssa said, you're told in a heteronormative upbringing, be this. Be more ladylike. Be, it's never just be you. Just be who you are. Be whatever. Why are we from the, which is another thing, we're Boxes, putting yeah. a box immediately on who we are from such a young age. Then when you finally get into the real world and you're your own adult self, you're like, shit, I don't know who I am because I've been told who to be. Literally. And then you finally are like, okay, let's basically be reborn and figure it the hell out. Right. Yeah, it's like high that school, high school all statement. over again. It's like remember the first day of high school where you're so awkward and you're like, oh, like I'm gonna try these things to like look cool or whatever or feel cool, and then eventually you kind of find your way and you find your style. But and then it's, you get it's back this, in the community. It's yeah, it's kind of and when it's you're coming same. out, it's like very similar to the first day of high school. You're like, okay, cool. I know who I like to fuck. I know who I love. I know who I want to be with. But also, like, what does that look like for me? Yeah. And and how does my upbringing affect this? this decision or this need like what what is preventing me or what's where's the resistance yeah, line? you like feel guilty almost you're like oh is that even a direction i yeah. have to go because my family like really frowns upon it yeah Oof. what about like, you even, Kenzie? um <laughs> hi uh, okay so i was raised super christian Same thing. um knew i liked girls fucking second grade started experimenting um in second grade, second grade wow absolutely she was gorgeous Anyway, <laughs> gorgeous as you, darling. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, had these feelings, but raised super Christian. My grandparents were very involved. So was my mom. Um, 
went to church at least two, three times a week. Very into it. Went to a private Christian school. Um, yeah. Um, didn't even know that was an option. Really. Were you always told to like present as a lady as well? Absolutely. Like, it'd be yeah. Like where you're like, like, act act like um, little skirts with fringe, like have your hair curly. <laughs> the fringe. You know, like. <laughs> Adds the fr- make sh- I think don't it was forget lace, about the fringe. Actually, not fringe. Yeah. You're not a lady unless you have <laughs> the fringe. <laughs> Wait, so you just said y- you didn't know that being gay was an option? Yeah, no. And even when I came out, um, my mom even literally was like, I didn't even know you could like girls either. Like, because she was raised in such a Christian household too that she didn't even know that was an option. So, how was I even know, was supposed to know that was an option? Um, so, kind of. Having these feelings in like middle school, high school, even having a crush on my really close best friend in high school, but not knowing like if it's even allowed while she at the time was going through her own transition, not even knowing what other terms were in fucking freshman year, you know? Um, So kind of like watching that happen, even being an option that you can transition, even being an option, like, but also being raised by Christian parents, like. Do you feel like the, it was the people around you then, like maybe not even your parents, because that wasn't even an option in their brains, and that don't that doesn't mean that they're bad people. It just means they're not even educated to have that question themselves. No, so literally, it was you kind of looking at what, like your friend transitioning, and people around you being like, "Oh, maybe this is something I need to look into." Literally, yeah, and how um her mom literally reacted to how she was allowed to kind of be her full true self every single day without judgment, and I was like, "Oh, that's like an option," but then also. And dance, because professional dancer, I've been dancing since I was three. Um, Growing up in the dance community, they're very much like, okay, present however you want to. But when I'm asking you to be masculine, be masculine in a job, in a dance job kind of point of view. Um, If I'm asking you to be feminine, be feminine. But by all means, show up in your own fucking style. Be unique. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you know. So for you, through Dance through has little, really given you yeah, the op- dance the also, yeah. Feeling of being like, wait a minute, I can be whatever it is. That's yeah. amazing. Which is that's cool, so that's kind beautiful. of the whole point of dance and art and Yeah. You found your a lot of your sexuality pan, you through know, art. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because there's no gender specific way to dance. If the, the the song calls for a masculine type movement, you move masculine. If the song calls for feminine, you move feminine. Or so if the yeah choreographer is asking for that, you do the job as is. But by all means, like show up however you would like to, because that's wow what we like to see. You know, I love seeing yeah. people that are unique in their own way. Like that's what being a human to me is. You yeah. know, like so you feel like the the friends around you and and through art that was really what helped teach you about coming out yeah and especially when I moved out and like not being a like moved from Colorado to California I was able to express my own individuality and learn even what that was and yeah that's amazing definitely a very raw experience but it was so human and awesome and it's so interesting to me how everyone finds their little door out of the closet like what how'd you find it where'd you find it where'd you get it because if you're not taught it then you got to find it through something it's also like everyone says it as if it's one door yeah, when there's so many doors there's so many, many door. right no, it's like a, a mirror door. room yeah. like you don't you know crawl yeah. out the ceiling wherever Who's you, to say? You, know, you get out is how you get out you're basically in yeah. the closet but you're trying on all the clothes while you're in there yeah and then i'm finally, dead yeah yeah, that's without funny. a mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No mirror. <laughs> just, no mirror. Just like showing up he in the just, world, like jumping in. Yeah, like, you gotta figure it hello. out. Hello, hey guys. <laughs> I just got here. What's up? Yeah. yeah. Aw, queer people are so beautiful because they really have to. We have to For figure. Real. They. We have to figure out so. <laughs> they have to so much. Out. So much. It's like so beautiful. Like, how did you find that? It is a beautiful. Experience. How did you figure out how to present, and how did you find that for yourself? And maybe we're all still finding it. You know, it's hard. Um, what about you? Hannah? Yeah, I know for, for my experience so different, right, as are all of ours. But you guys having the religious background, complete opposite of that. My parents and I were so, so close. My upbringing was very much filled around the par- parental love and security. And I'm so fortunate for that. I think you guys know I talk about how much my parents are just an They're absolute so lovely. blessing. <laughs> I love your parents. Yeah. Um, and I could not be more grateful for them. So my upbringing with the heteronormative aspects wasn't necessarily as much of a box with that. 
I think I found the boxes in being an athlete. So I was a hockey player, gay. Hot. Couldn't be more gay. Um, from the age I was, same as you, dance, three. And that right there is what put the heteronormative boxes, right? You go and you are this person who is immediately strong. Um, you have to present a certain way. You know, you, uh, you go out, you, you wear very masculine padding. All these things that then that's putting a box on me. And I was also always known as Hannah the hockey player. So finding out this other personality that I was wasn't really an option. Um, I think with that, as I've gotten older, because I didn't really have the difficulties with the parents, not that there wasn't trauma, there was very much trauma, but I had that love, which was great. I think for me, it was more internal. I found that the challenge being queer and kind of coming out of this so-called box that we put on ourselves was literally within myself. I also found it within relationships. And I don't think that's talked about enough how much relationships also put a box on you. Within these relationships, I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to figure out, okay, I'm queer, but I'm still presenting as femme. Now I'm with this person who's presenting more masculine. So I got to jump into this role of being more feminine. Well, it's so interesting because if you're saying you were, you're a hockey player, right? You were put into this masculine box. Yeah. Then you started experimenting with femininity. Yeah. And then, then what happens when you're like, wait, I'm going to return to my true self to true form so you're getting trauma from now your partners yeah you're getting trauma from your partners you're also don't get me wrong I I figuring it out is a journey and it's a beautiful journey it's a hard journey it's all the things but for a moment there little does our audience know <laughs> I was feminine presenting had long hair all the things so what when I was yes. yeah all the you stuff too. Yeah. I met you in wedges oh for sure yeah. I think you had wedges on too I did not <laughs> I did not. Don't lie. Alyssa and I, I wore met. docs still. Alyssa and I met when we were both we were both femme. Well, maybe we'll show I showed up here barefoot out of Florida. I did not have wedges. <laughs> maybe <laughs> we'll we'll <laughs> show y'all when we were femme. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, so when I first started realizing my queerness, I wasn't that more femme presenting box. And I think that I found that I had to fit this mold, especially with my previous ex. I put this idea in my head that because I'm the one with long hair, because I'm the one that's more femme presenting, I wear the girlier clothes. I had to be that. I know I wanted to cut my hair. I thought about doing it. I wanted to dress how I dress now, but with long hair, but I didn't have the ability to do it. Not because I think that they would have loved me any differently, but I didn't feel this unconditional love. I mean, there was other things without the relationship, right? It was toxic. It was all the things good, bad, all this stuff, but I wasn't secure enough and ready personally to be like, wait a minute, this is who I am. This is my truth. Let me jump into it. And it takes a long time. It's childhood, it's parents, and it's very much also the relationships that we're put in, whether they're friendships or, you know, partners. That is so fascinating too. Cause I mean, even if you look back to like teenage teenagers right and you see like when a boy or when a girl likes a boy she kind of like starts changing her appearance to get him to like her a lot of that in the lesbian community is really toxic because you think oh if I like a certain type of person I need to look a certain way to make them love me which is I guess that bleeds into any type of sexuality but it's really sad because when it comes to heteronormative cliches why does the lesbian community feel like we have to mimic man and woman like cis man and cis woman like why can't you just be two chicks who love the fuck out of each other? Like, why does there have to be a masculine and a feminine? Like, what happens? I know so many girls that are, like, on the butch side, you know, or more masculine that are attracted to other masculine individuals. And I also know so many beautiful femme for femme couples. But for some reason, even in 2024, that's really taboo. It's not only taboo, we give them shit. Yeah, I we mean, make fun of yeah, people for it. And yeah, which... Yeah. Um, of course, between us, right? Like I tease you guys, but you pick whoever you want to be with. And I'm like, cool, fun, yeah, whatever you want. And that's how it should be. And that's another thing that we're going to dive into. But especially in L.A., you're not only in this heteronormative box that you get from, you know, your parents. Then you're in a box here. Then you're in a box there. And L.A. just adds all these things to it. And it's like, oh, my God, why? We're in a place that should be yeah. so accepting, should be so this and that. And it's not. I remember growing up, I always was thinking, oh, when I get to L.A., when I get to L.A., because I'm from Florida, it's a very small town as well, and 
you know, wasn't raised with like not accepting parents, but I definitely wasn't ra- raised with parents who educated me either. No one ever sat me down and they were like, hey, you think that might be because you're gay? Like no one ever said that. They were just like, oh, she's just being Alyssa. And I'm like, well, hello. You know, what does that mean? Can someone explain it to me, please? I wish I would have been educated. But I remember when I started coming into my truth and figuring all of that out when I was like 18, 17, I was like really like, all right, something's going on here. Um, I thought I like fantasized about L.A., right? And I was like, when I get to L.A., I can just be whoever the fuck I want to be. And I'm going to meet all these gay people and I'm going to just be accepted and I'm going to jump and have a soft place to land. And that was so not the fucking case. And I love that you brought up like not all trauma or not all heteronormative boxes come from parents and and parental wounds. They, They also come from partners. They come from our community. They come from social media and friends. It, yeah. friends. I mean, yeah, so much of that is friends. Oh, my God. There's so many like friends that I've I mean, just even friendships that I've witnessed in queer spaces where I hear the way they speak to each other. And it's it's so gross to me because I'm like, damn, as a community that knows what it's like to not be accepted for so long, we should this should be a safe space to just do whatever, present however, like whoever why are we trying to be like straight people? Why are we trying to play mom and dad? How about we're just two girls or I mean, two it, whatever? You it's, know? I played it, mom and dad in preschool. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we're past that. So yeah. I'm trying to play mom and dad. It's, you know? it, I mean, it also, of course, it comes down Unless to... Unless it's in the bedroom, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes down to people... We can role play, that's okay. People not being secure in themselves. I mean, that's why y'all give each other totally. shit. You make fun of that person because you don't really like yourself. Yeah. And that's a hard truth, but in a projection gotta, yeah it's a projection like yeah. you're making fun of them because you don't feel good and it's like well it's internalized homophobia is what it is there's a term for i mean the I, call was, comes I, from was, inside the I had to learn about that yes. because for so much so much of me had internalized homophobia you know like i was afraid that if i liked a certain type of person or if i presented a certain type of way that it would like rob me of the ability to receive love or I don't know yeah. it's just this weird this, thing yeah. and it's internalized homophobia a lot of it does come from the models that we look at growing up the heterosexual picture of what a perfect relationship looks like and so you're like okay even if I like girls someone has to play one role yeah. no like I free you guys <laughs> I hope we can all do that we can free our listeners of like fuck the roles fuck the boxes totally. that's exactly what we're trying to get away from yeah, and and like you said, I mean, it does take a second. And is that internalized homophobia or that fear too? I know. Speaking of my past relationship, when I wanted to cut my hair, when I wanted to do all that, I yeah. mentioned it's not that I don't think they would have loved me. It's that I didn't love myself enough to know what I was able to walk. Was Definitely. I able to be my true self? And now I'm in such a happy, healthy relationship. And my girlfriend, her name is Mads. Uh, she has, and I'm so so fortunate. Um, for her and for this, but she has said time and time again, babe, I don't care if you, if you grow your hair out. I don't care if you wear a dress tomorrow. Mm. I love you for you. And it's like, Whoa. guys, it's out there. There's a person that is willing to love you, whether you want to wear your wedges or you want to wear <laughs> your what dikey I, Harley boots. I don't have wedges. Yes, you do. Not anymore. I didn't. I in my closet still. Hi. Just for that one I wish you wore them today. <laughs> It's only because I can't fit in. Yeah. Just I'm going to show up in wedges next episode. How about yeah. that? I don't just, have them. Blake has them just in case they want to be fed tomorrow. I just got rid of them. That, but that was like oh, my whole little You're trauma. holding on to them like just in I case. I was holding on only I because like, it was a therapy <laughs> thing too. Like I didn't yeah. know why I was holding on to it. And my therapist Aww, was like, hey, yeah. I think you're holding on to that like part of your That's life. That's cute though. And I was like, yeah. Threw it away. <laughs> like, I, I still remember so important. like about four years ago, I like threw away a, f- a final I was still kind of working through like how, how to present or whatever but I was like no more dresses how like, scary was that oh my god it was no I, it was yeah, terrifying but also I'm your like closet whoa now. when I look through my closet it's like black nothing. black yeah just black, black, black. black. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. but that that feeling of even though it's just clothing and a lot of people are not going to understand this but it, that gender euphoria to be like someone told me I had to wear this and I choose to say fuck that I don't want to wear it because I don't way. feel good in it Granted, if you want to wear dresses and you'd feel weird in masculine masculine clothes, which is a very common thing too, 
then throw away all the stuff, the masculine boxes that someone put you in. Literally, like, if it I, doesn't kindle you joy, throw it away. Yeah, yeah. everyone's gonna away. start having like you're gonna see next yeah. weekend on the beach all these queers creating bonfires <laughs> with <laughs> their like clothes, burning oh all their God, that would be a fun shirts, event. Like, wedges. we should throw an event where we all just like if we have anything left that's like traumatizing, it's just like a burn yeah. pile. Yeah, like, YGFP like a okay burn pile. YGFP like beach burn. Yeah, beach I'm burn. I'm so right. down. A beach burn. Yeah. Doc Weiler. How empowering was that when you did get rid of that it, side of It was of you? amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, and, and for me, my hair was like not really, a, a, some people get that euphoria from hair. I Hair was, to me, like I could have long hair or short hair and I still feel like my, it, it's, they, themselves. It doesn't matter about like my hair. For me, it was like holding on to those final pieces of clothing um, because so much like being, especially in acting, like you said, dance, like being in acting like there was a lot of boxes put around me there too because so many people said like oh you have to be a blank canvas to be an actor you have to be presenting and you're like feminine so you can book these kind of feminine roles because that's what roles you should play and for so long I didn't book shit when I would audition for feminine roles because they can read through the bullshit you know and when I started auditioning for more when I started being in myself and then I started getting called in for roles that were more me I started booking because I was in my truth. It's also just energetically how it makes you feel, you know? And you, you get so much just confidence within yourself when you're in your truth. Yeah. I know that you and I, as I mentioned, Alyssa and I, when we met, we were both more quote unquote feminine. The feminine side. Yeah, yeah, we had longer hair, all the things. And you say yours was close. Mine was so much my hair because I had wanted to do it for so long. And I just felt more comfortable being like this. But the second I stepped into that, you feel good. In all things. And you also just, even if it's not true, when you're out, you're like, oh, that person thinks I'm a true. You could yeah. think these things because you're so much more in your truth. It's interesting, too. I was talking to someone about this the other day. When I became more myself and was okay with it, when I wasn't resisting it anymore, I actually felt safer to be more in my feminine. And when I was fighting my femininity and, or I'm sorry, wait, let me get that right yeah when I was when I was presenting as feminine even though inside I felt so not truthful and I, when I felt masculine I was like afraid of my femininity and I felt more of a toxic masculine than when I was presenting feminine whereas now that I'm presenting more truthfully to me which is like on a little more of the masculine side I feel more comfortable with my femininity now like I feel so comfortable being like a little princess or like a girly pop I think like, I'm we like, talked about that when I cut my hair you were like how like don't you feel so Don't feminine? Don't you feel so feminine? I was like, actually, I do. I've been way more girlier. Yeah. Like, I'm a fucking girly Because you're more now. confident. That gender yeah. euphoria gives yeah. you permission to feel all of your sides. Yeah. But you have to find what that looks like for you. Yeah. And it takes time. And it's a scale. I want to, yeah. like, it's a fucking scale. It doesn't Kinsey have scale. to be. <laughs> no, it, it's a real thing. Yeah. Being No, yeah. it's. I think it's a whole yin and yang. It doesn't have to be 50-50. It could be. 595 literally it could be yeah. three you know like there's so plus a fraction like you could add eight tenths in there but that's to. again what the original point of this is the is the boxes and how we've we've like go towards the male female when why as a why community doing that? as a women loving <laughs> women weird. community Let's take a step back and be like okay wait a minute we actually don't need to be this mold or that mold we're all doing it to each other when we want to be loved by everyone, but we're not allowing each other to be that. It's yeah. just, it's wild to me. Well, and loving those parts of yourself that are hard to look at too. Like I learned so much from acting classes now that I'm in better ones. And like one of the things that's so interesting that he, that he always says is like part, so much of life is about coming home to who you were before the world told you who you should be. And I think it's so interesting. Like with your story is like you did grow up like, kind of being a little tomboy so did I like growing like when I was little when I look back at my history my inherent self like I was a little shit I was the little brother or, or the big brother of the family still like, is I yeah still like I was so much of just like a dude in so many ways and I dressed so tomboy I was friends with all boys and then as I got older and I started craving love and validation I started trying on new things for the wrong reasons I started trying on femininity to receive more love to receive more acceptance and then all of my 20s has not been about learning. It's been about unlearning. It's been about stripping myself, not putting on Facts. more things, but like getting rid of those things that I thought I had to 
be and then be, now I look more like my five-year-old self than I than I ever have you which know? so much of it is about we home. all we all ha- like have to go through and we go through it and it's hard and it's all the things and it's beautiful so I will say if you are in that right now take it feel it love it and hate it yeah. but when you get to that other end it's like just a breath of fresh air I think and I don't know if this is always true this could be dangerous as well but like essentially this has always been true for me like where your resistance lies is where your truth might be unfortunately and it's a little scary to be like whoa that's you that become feels what uncomfortable you but yeah like like that little quote like life begins at the end of your comfort zone oh my like god totally yeah like that shit that brings up something in you even gayness like you meet these men that are like super homophobic and they're super like oh i don't I, i'm a man i'm a bit Honey, They're you might be a little gay. Yeah. You, like, you might like boys. <laughs> you might, your resistance is, your your truth is showing. Like when you're so anti something or you're so like forcing something Ew. out. Yeah. A lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times that's because there's something about that that speaks to you. And, and that was always really interesting. Like I was always so ashamed of my like tomboy side. And then now I'm like. Well, it's kind of it's like a dope part of me. <laughs> <laughs> you you know? either take it or you can take it walk or leave the other it. Like I'm tired of cause... trying to receive validation. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also want to talk about terms today because there's so many terms that are coming about, and I love that we're evolving as a community and we're adding sure. to the gay alphabet. Um. But it's a little we're bit confusing. Li- we're a tad bit confused. <laughs> I'm a little dyslexic over here. I know the I straight know. people are hella confused. Guys, just You're so you know, we're, we're confused. confused. And painfully we're in the community. Yeah. Confused. We're painfully confused. I'm not just like, and I mean that with all love too. Like I'm yeah. trying to learn. I'm trying to understand. Try. But I also want to be respectful. Of like course. I don't, you know, like I don't want to like accidentally. So please. Y'all, what the yeah. fuck? what the fuck though yeah and like the boxes thing right like we don't we we want to get away from that but i think that sometimes when you add all these like letters to the alphabet and you add all these terms yes it's lovely that people can find something to identify with and i really i see that but um why are we creating more boxes because we should just be but maybe we'll get there someday maybe we'll get there okay monogamy is when you just share your emotions and your sex and your relationship with one person just want just you and your person that's it no outside energies in any form right and then there's this new term that we found uh elizabeth a chef she has a PD, a phd in this shit so i'm, I'm not claiming to be the expert We're not experts. No, she's yeah she's she does big things um she wrote an article kind of explaining some of these terms so there's something called monogamish, like monogamy with an S-H at the end of it. And the term means relationships that are romantically monogamous, but also allowed for agreed upon outside sexual relationships. Agreed. Only sexual. Outside. Only sexual. And it's two of them together. So they're basically or... monogamous, but they're down to have sex together, not together. separately okay, okay. with someone else. Okay. And share someone else together. Like have a threesome, I guess. Or a foursome or I don't know. It's however many. Monogamish. Monogamish. I like it. Yeah. So um, how do you guys feel about that? What are you? I'm not the ish. Take the ish out. Um, You're monogamous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So the other Take thing. The ish out. <laughs> Um, there's this pressure yeah. to be like trendy and cool like oh, yeah, I'm, I'm like poly and stuff I yeah. love that if you're poly I love that. but also yeah. monogamy is okay yeah that's totally fine yeah. I feel like Everything I've been ashamed okay. a little bit for being monogamous um, I don't like sharing uh, I like to j- it's a lot of work already in my head so it's like <laughs> one at a time you know yeah but what yeah. do you guys um, <laughs> so I've been with my girlfriend for two and a half years wild to say that um, I love her. Hi, Matt. Hi, yeah, Matt. she's just the best, most beautiful. Um, but I think, so a, a couple things to that. I used to be very, very monogamous. Like I was that type of person that was like, you are mine and that's it. And I think it was to a point where it was a little much. I mean, I know in my last relationship, my ex wanted me to be more of that person that allowed them to to kind of explore and enjoy things while they were out even if it was kissing their friend or kissing someone else within a safety environment, right? But I was so not at that point. And I wish that I could have been for them, but I just didn't feel this like unconditional 
love. And I think that's what it really comes down to, right? Totally. It comes down to trust and just feeling like you are the most secure. Like whatever happens, there's a blanket around you. It's interesting how that aligns too because you're so in your truth now physically and and gender wise and now you're also in your truth with like what kind of relationship you're okay with i think that evolves together maybe it totally does and i'm so fortunate that it really didn't actually happen with them because now being with mads we've had such beautiful conversations about how we want to spend this life together what does that look like for us if we are out and we both maybe find someone attractive let's invite that into our life because This is an entire life together. We don't know what might be or not be. I don't want to, speaking of boxes, put her in a box. I want her to live and enjoy her truth and be her, like, honest version and just feel so good. Free. Yeah, and free. Obviously, there's, like, I don't want her going and and doing something without trust or conversation or communication before. But it's, again, it's all surrounded by the the safety element I think that's really beautiful. I'd like to get to a place where I can have that with someone. So is that like because of who we're friends with now at the time? Are you like cool and like trustworthy with your partner? Does it matter like who your friends are at the time and who which partner you are with at the time then? Yeah, like is it unique to Mads yeah. or is it um, something you would do again? Or you I have, mean, you know? I guess I don't know, right? Because uh, God forbid <laughs> it's just with Mads. Um but I think it is also, like, if I were to put that aside, I think it is just me and, as you said, where I am now because I'm so much in my truth and I've done so much work um, on myself and with that. But I'd like to say that I would do that with any partner. But I also want to say that if I was with someone and they were like, hey, I don't want to do that. Okay. I love you. I love you unconditionally. We are each other's. We don't need to do that. But I like to have the freedom to at least sit down. And I think my biggest thing is communication. Yeah, like I can't, totally. I'm, I'm also not a person, especially now being so in the truth and all the things, right? I never want to say no because I don't know. I really don't. And that's not the way that I live my life. I'm the type of person that lives my life very much of, okay, I want to figure that out. And I want to learn together. Yeah, I she think got you're on to something there. I mean, really, I think it's really beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a beautiful way to look at a relationship because yeah you guys only sleep with each other you obviously are not going to go fuck people on the side without each other but understanding and being a realist and the fact that we're planning to be together long term you never know what's going to come up and just dealing with things on like a situational basis and you're saying i want to have that friendship with my partner too where she can just feel comfortable to tell me if she thinks someone is attractive and maybe that's something we share together or vice versa and so yeah i think you're on to something i mean i met a couple When I was in Palm Springs with my ex, Kayla, I was asking this couple because I really, you know, not had good relationships. And I just like always ask these healthy couples. I don't just I just don't know if I believe in them. I don't know. I'm so weird. But in healthy couples. Yeah, I just have never seen it. Like I never was raised. I was back to like models and stuff. I was never raised around people that had successful, successful relationships. I've always seen them blow up in people's faces, be divorced, be you know, so I've always kind of just been really protective over my freedom for that. Which makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's why I mean, like, you think you're on to something. I was talking to this couple and they had been together for like seven years. They were a lesbian couple. And I was like, what's your secret? Like seven years is kind of a long time. Not really, but it is for in your 20s. Um, and they were like, look, they like grabbed each other's hands. And I was like literally sitting at the bar, like drunk, like about to cry. cry. <laughs> and they were like, this is my adventure partner. And I was That's like, so cute. I was like, what? Like, adventure partner is crazy. Like, that is, to me, love. So it's such a pure Very, thing. Like, to look at someone. Yeah, I mean, obviously communication. I don't, yeah. You don't want them doing things without you all the time or whatever. But just looking at them as like, look, we're doing life together. I have your hand. You have mine. And we're not, we're not, I think, just, I just think that's beautiful. Oh, well, open it's to the it's like, yeah. we, again, with everything, guys, we put pressure on it. And I think that's another thing. With Mads, I have found, okay, let me take off this pressure because you know, her and I, we were talking about something last night. We look at our parents. We look at their relationship. We don't think, God, they're learning. So with your partner, they're learning. They're a human. They're figuring this thing out just as you're figuring it out. It's yeah. like, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, let's try and not know what we're yeah, doing together. together. I, I watched this thing the other day and it was like, when we get into these relationships, instead of coming together and taking the best pieces, from your childhood and putting them together, you always expect the other person to mold to you. Whoa, let's try and mold together. 
and then we can see what yes. we like. And I, I think I also just want to stress, Mads and I didn't jump into our relationship and say, oh my gosh, yeah. we're going to do this. It took us so long and we're learning things every day and we're exploring, but fuck, like I want to do it with her and hell yeah, that my partner is also willing to do it with me. I love that because I think obviously a foundation needs to be built. Like I've kind of made the mistake of being, hearing these concepts and being like to a girl like, so like... <laughs> You want to do that together? Like, you know, and they're like, what the hell? Like, no. But I think you had this beautiful, graceful, gentle approach where you guys just like built this really healthy foundation. And then that's something you deal with together later on. It's not like something you just jumped into immediately. Right. I mean, yeah, that I mean, open to the combo. Y'all yeah. trot. Yeah. I stress it. Therapy is so awesome for yourself. Hell, why are we also couples therapy? It's beautiful. Yeah, it it's is. awesome. And it helps. And it's just yeah. like. We are all, like, try to learn more things. Well, I went from that. Like, I didn't like that. Like, having that open communication and conversation of, like, adding a third or doing whatever. That was very uncomfortable for me. Sure. Like, very. But dating her and her being pan and so open-minded, which is such a blessing. But, like, it got me to think, like, oh, like, because this one question she asked me, she's like, how, did you, how would you feel if we added a third? Just for shits and giggles. Yeah. It made me uncomfortable, but then I sat there for a second. I was like... Well, I mean, I can't say no to a hypothetical, but I also can't say no. And then what if the time comes and we're like eight years together, or 10 years together, and we just want a little bit of spice? That's Doesn't beautiful. mean I don't love I, her yeah. any less. So yeah, you guys and are I, monogamous. We're monogamous, but, yes. But you've had conversations about being Yeah, monogamous. but I can't say no. I can't shut it down. But it's I also, yeah, a hypothetical situation yeah. Yeah. currently because we're still like learning and growing and being our own couple. Well, at and the you moment. have a lot of experience with. <laughs> you want to dive lot. in? No, like I have. No, you just you're really she's open. educated. She no, because Kinsey's she's pansexual, educated. right? So you have yeah. like yeah. experience all around when it comes to like different dynamics. And didn't you date a couple once for a brief moment? Yeah, I did. What was that like? It was awesome. Um, <laughs> you know, from my pansexual point of view. Um, from wait, a, real quick question: What is that called? Is it swinging or is it polygamy? What is that? Because that's not monogamous. That would be if, polygamy. Did you guys like have individual relationships or was it two? No. Of and I didn't, and I didn't ever think of having individual relationship with them, like with the girl and the guy, like separately. I never thought of it like that. It was always like a little bundle that I was just happy to be a part of. That's so cute. A bundle. Like a bundle deal. Crazy. Did you guys, so I guess I have so many questions with that. Um, I, I think it's called polygamy. Yeah. I'm just trying to make so sure. So did yeah. you also have the emotional side? Like, did you go on dates? Did you do that along with having sex? Um, Kind <laughs> of, yeah. Like, um, we definitely had that connection of um, we're also sexually attracted, but also, like, I deeply care for you, and you're also, like, a cool human that I would stand next to. And so you for. had an emotional Absolutely. relationship Absolutely, and it was them. definitely, like, um... From a guy's point of view and or from my point of view, like I had a guy and a girl. So it was like almost like a cloud nine situation for a hot second. <laughs> and there's but like, it was me Blake exploring Spanish. myself before I even knew Blake. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, like. No, it's beautiful like, that you tried yeah. that. I think it's so cool when people are open. Yeah. I'm like, that's so cool. And like it was. You tried that. It was so like. Nice yeah. 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 It was like so beautiful to me. Like, I thought it was just so cool that they could just experience somebody together. And, like, for me to even have the privilege to be that person at that time and space, like, and they made it so beautiful. We were all very communicative in every single part of it. <clears throat> um, and it was very much like we're having fun in the moment right now. And now they're, like, thriving. They have a baby together. Like, it's fucking, That's it was cute. just, like, a very good, like, time and place for me to, like, explore this part of my life and them too you know like it was just like a very cool human safe yeah very safe definitely. trying yeah, to definitely. fill our listeners in just on like the term wise because that's okay i made a mistake that's not polygamy that's something different that would be considered what you did is considered polyamory that's considered poly. Oh, that yeah. is poly. So what's yeah, the yeah. difference between poly and yeah so poly. it says okay because <laughs> i'm so confused i'm like what is that called um polyamory we looked at each other yeah like uh what is that Poly so it's not monogamish because monogamish is what you right. guys do where you do it together polyamory is a relationship style that allows people to openly conduct multiple sexual and or romantic okay. relationships simultaneously with the knowledge and consent of all involved uh in in the situation whereas polygamy is 
an ancient thing. Cultures throughout the world have long practiced polygamy. It's a form of marriage consisting of one or more than two persons. And a lot of times it's one husband with multiple wives. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what do you think if it really came down to, I know uh, if you guys audience wise don't know this yet, but Alyssa does tend to jump in with someone and be like, ha yeah, let's do this. But you do need to build a foundation. So if it were where you were dating <laughs> someone, <laughs> if it, I just if it were where you were dating someone or it got to that point, which I know you you crave love and all of those beautiful things, right? <laughs> what would you want it to be? Would you want it to be or do you not know yet? I think so. I'm examining my toxicity. Yeah, we all have it. Shadow work. work. Shadow work, guys. No being mean to no, me. I agree. But I yeah, right? Yeah. Same with you with Absolutely. monogamy and all that and like kind of being possessive. Yes. I have found that in the past I have sometimes been a bit of a hypocrite because I've wanted to be able to be my, I'm very flirty, just especially when I'm out. Like, I just like fun. It actually means nothing. I'm not like over here banging. Even with friends. Yeah. I'm friends. I flirt with everyone. Like, it's just like who I am. But like, I want to be able to like do whatever I want to do. But there's like a demon in me that doesn't want her to do any of that. I'm like the parasites in me want to flirt and get away with, you know, I don't, it's not that I want to go fuck all these people, but I just, I want to be able to like do whatever I want. Or if I want to make out with someone, I do that or whatever. Uh, if I, you know, and then like, if I see my girl doing that, I'm like, Alyssa has a worm inside her. What is that called? Like, what is that called? No, it's called, it's called hypocritical possessiveness. Also, is it, is it because you don't want to answer to somebody or is it really because like you want to be able to like actually explore? According to my ex, I'm emotionally immature. See, Um, I think that for you, I think it's fear. Okay. So I'm good. I'm doing the shadow work, right? So I think that I could get to a point. I, I like your approach. I think my goal, I just don't think I've found the right person. And you say that to me all the time. You're like, honestly, also, you're not that toxic. You just haven't found the right person that, like, the values don't align always. Like, I do want an adventure partner. And I want it to be something we do together. And that I've not found someone that's down for that. It's usually always, like, a girl that's like, don't look at anyone, don't talk. If I say hello to another girl, it's, like, someone that's like, you know. So I think maybe I attract possessiveness I because I'm toxic. possessive. Well, yeah, but maybe you attract your, what you are, you know? Maybe. So essentially it's like, I'm a free bird. Let me do whatever mm-hmm. I want, but I'm possessive over you. That's not I okay. I know that's spirit. not okay. Yeah. yeah. But I would like, I see myself, granted I'm young, I'm still learning, but eventually when I get into a serious relationship, I like this approach. I like building a sturdy foundation with someone being monogamous with them and then opening it up together on a situational basis. I could see me doing Monogamish. that. Monogamish. Monogamish. I yeah, like that it, term. It takes a second, you know? And yeah. There's no right or wrong. It's all just learning. And I would love also for our audience to explain other things on the terms. Totally. And if you are yeah. or do identify as even the, the ones that we've stated, let us know. I find it really, really fascinating. And I'd love to ask you guys some questions on it, yeah. too. I think that would be really fun. Yeah, I just guess new there's terms. Like a difference, too, between swinging and open. Like there's so many terms. But so swinging is intentional forms of non-monogamy. But it's best known when you switch a roo partners like a wife swap. <laughs> for only so that imagine sexual. that that would be like right? if i am dating someone and not me you're dating mads and you two are dating and we're all like all right kinsey you come over here you go there and you go there like you all switch i think it's, it's just all sex. for just sex oh, oh, it's, it is oh, no it's, it's just not for like no almost, not like we're like, going God, for yeah, tea i gotta learn everything yeah it's, like, it's it's more common among <laughs> strangers What's sex parties color? clubs there's like swingers clubs yeah. i've been to one or just Remember go when to he the... took us to the Swingers Cafe and I was like, oh, I didn't yeah. even know I was allowed no, to be in really here. Really good like, pancakes. What do you mean? I, I like, don't know if this, this has to swingers. Be. Yeah. Or you just go to the grocery store and you flip your pineapple over, and you're set. Not at the when I found store. out the pineapple the thing, store. my mind was fucking blown because I didn't Wait, know. Blake hates like upside down. Not that I hate. I just didn't know. And like you know, I like SpongeBob and stuff like that growing up and stuff. So I had like this. I had a floor oh mat, my a floor mat that was like a pineapple, and my neighbor knocked on my door. This is like years ago, and they're like, "Hey, like," and like asking me like personal fucking questions, like pretty personal, like sex. And I was like, "I'm sorry, like I don't like. Why do you find it necessary to ask me these things?" And he's like, "The pineapple on your thing." I was like, "I don't understand." <gasps> he thought you were. I never understood until I got older, and I was like, "This whole wow, time he thought that's I, hilarious." He thought you were. Let's end, know. I let's end it on the pineapple. Yeah. That's um. So be aware of pineapples, y'all. That's a thing. I 
I didn't know. Upside down means you swing. Wow. So swinging. Okay. So swinging is like wife swap. I think I could see myself doing <laughs> one time that. You're a like, swinger monogamous. Like in the future, like, okay, I'm monogamous, right? We're like, let's say we've been married for like one, with 20 Sydney years. Swimming. Yeah. 20 years. We're at a party with our hot couple friend. We're like, you want to switch? That's kind of funny. No? I mean, I don't know. If After 20 years of marriage, I think that's a whole different but thing. But I, yeah. I also <laughs> say that, but I know if I'm crazy about someone seeing her in front of me with, like, my friend or, like, someone else, I'd be like, no, no. Yeah, Alyssa, do you here. think maybe Alyssa gets so you scary. find a person for you, you won't be like that? Like, you won't be like, oh, don't do that. Maybe like, if I felt don't. safe. Yes. And, and I, it's also my go. job to make her feel safe. Yeah, and that I don't make you, people feel safe. I love feel safe. <laughs> you can't, you can't make people feel safe if you're not safe, buddy. Yeah, like you gotta be safe too. It's yeah. all growth, like you said. Yeah. You're still figuring out. You're still learning. Which it's is, all there's the no timeline to it. Yeah. I'm around. It the beautiful thing is, I'm around all these healthy couples, which we also go through times of I know struggle, and that's okay it takes too. <laughs> and I'm that friend that gets to be like, "Hey, <laughs> chill <laughs> on that." Um, in addition to all of these terms, when it comes to naming types of relationship dynamics, there's also like a never-ending uh, alphabet when it comes to describing yourself or the box that you want to put yourself in or fuck a box you know um but obviously we know lesbian women we're for the girls gay is usually for men who love men but i call myself gay all the time i'm gay all the time i'm is that gay like a wrong thing to do if i, don't I know. call is myself it? gay yeah i don't know gay just because you you're... don't see gay men running around being like Bitch, you're such. I'm such a les. maybe you do i mean but i don't think they care i think we, we can claim gay Queer, gay, lesbian. Yeah. yeah, all the things, right? Yeah, yeah. right. We're everything. Um, there's obviously bisexual, bi, bi plus. There's transgender. Bi plus. Um, Please uh, elaborate a little bit more dude, on the bi plus. I don't it know says, what that is. Others may use bi plus, which is intended to be inclusive of those who call themselves bi, pan, fluid, queer, and oh, other multiple. words. Multiple things, I oh. guess. Yeah. Oh. So you're bi, but you're also pan because you're into everything. 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 So, awesome. Okay. Okay. Uh, transgender, queer, non-binary. Okay, there's other. There's these other identities that are interesting. Allosexual. What's allosexual? Describes a person who experiences sexual attraction to others who is not asexual. So aren't we all allosexual? I guess, yeah. I don't know. We need an expert, don't we? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, we're gonna. We'll do that. I feel like we should be the experts. Why? We're queer. No, no there's no. so many also, new terms. We're trying to yeah, learn. but there's so many terms. Like. Yeah. Intersex. If you're aloe, can you be a lesbian too? Because yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah, one more, one more. Two-spirited is a beautiful term. What's well, a two-spirited? That's spirit. only if you're indigenous, right? Yeah, it's only oh. it's for indigenous and First Nations That's people. Cute. Um, but it's it's having to do with kind of a similar to a non-binary situation where you believe you're both male and female. Specific to indigenous. Yeah, people. I guess. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's really so beautiful. Sweet, Those, the term two-spirited like is so stunning to me. Yeah. Um, sure. There's a never-ending. A terms and stuff like if you have some relationship that you're exploring that's maybe new to the community we'd love to hear from you we'd love to hear your opinions on on things and advice too yeah um or questions opinions on boxes and if you like boxes yeah if you don't yeah like boxes. heteronormative boxes yeah. and kind of how you felt growing up and how you that affected your presentation and your queerness yeah we and love stories we love story time yeah. Yeah. maybe things. we'll do a call-in episode yeah um well, in. I'm happy to Genius. be here, guys. Um, welcome, welcome, I hope welcome. you liked the first episode back. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. We missed you guys. I hope you missed us. <laughs> um, we have a lot of really exciting things coming up. Just we'll in time see, for Pride. Yeah. See y'all then. Bye, see you guys. guys. See you.